His name was Ramchandra Das, and he had a problem. He lived in an area of India called the Bihar region. It's in North, Northeast India, if you want to Google it. I was actually Googling, I was zoomed in on his little villa, it was cool. His problem was, he lived in a little tiny village with no road access to the city of Atri that was roughly a couple kilometers walk between the two. The city of Atri, A-T-R-I, Atri, is where you did everything. That's where you went to work, that's where you went to school, that's where you went grocery shopping, that's where you met up with your, your homies and did some whatever you're going to do. That I mean, that's everything was there. The little village was just like some farms and your house and maybe your cow. You know, I mean, that's it. Well, Ramchandra was so proud, he was the first person in his village to purchase his own truck. He was so hype about this truck. He's like, oh, you boys got a truck. Now, the problem was, do you like people messing with your stuff? Especially when you get something brand new. you like people messing with it? No. no. Of course you don't. Ramchandra didn't either. And he had to leave his truck in the city of Atri and walk to his village. And every time he'd be like, oh, someone's going to mess with my truck. Now, this walk was not easy. It was arduous. It was not paved. It was rocky. Sometimes it was muddy. Sometimes it was 110 degrees. I mean, it was not fun to walk two hours each way every day. Every kid going to school, every person going to the store. Every, I mean, we're spoiled even having pavement between the things that we want to go to. So Ramchandra, realizing that he's got this issue with his truck there and, man, can't we just have a road? He petitions the, the local government and says, can we build a road? And they laugh him off. They said, of course we're not going to build a road. Y'all can move to the city. We're not going to do that. It's too much energy. It's too hard. It's too expensive. We're not doing it. Y'all ain't worth that amount of our uh, attention. So Ramchandra, one night, after walking two hours home, after working a full day, after walking two hours there, he gets home, he goes into his uh, little hut, I've seen pictures, he goes into his hut, he gets his little tool bag, comes out, pulls out a hammer and a chisel, <coughs> walks right up to the mountain, and begins to think. Here's what he starts to say. Instead of, someone should do something about that, he says, I should do something about that. Ramchandra takes his hammer, and he takes his chisel, puts it up on the side of a freaking mountain, and begins to pound, and a little piece of rock falls down. He does it again. A little piece of rock falls, he backs up, surveys. Now, fast forward to the next day. He, could, he works at it for maybe two hours that night. He's exhausted. You know how tired you are after work? But well, walk two hours each way every day on like branches and through like jungle. I mean, this is not an easy walk. And it's two hours each way. He's exhausted, but he doesn't care because there's something he wants. The next day he comes out and works at it some more. The next day he comes out some more. The next week he comes at it some more. The weekend, he's out there pounding against a mountain. He starts asking the other villagers. He said, hey, will you, will you grab your tools and help? And they go, <laughs> What? And then they start talking. They go, Ramchandra, cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. <laughs> Ramchandra done lost his mind. What is Ramchandra smoking that he thinks he can drill through a mountain? What an idiot. Have fun with that. How long do you think he stayed after? I'm just going to ask a couple of you. I mean, <laughs> picture staying after something like that for six months. You're like, oh, no, I wouldn't. How long do you think he stayed after it? Just At two least a decade. A decade, you think? Yeah. I mean, if you started now, 2033, you're still going. Yeah. Day after day. He seems stubborn so far. So What's <laughs> wow, okay, okay. Anybody else have a guess how long he stayed after it? Five years. Five years? Okay. 14 years later, he drills through the other side of the mountain. Now, it wasn't a tunnel like you're imagining. It was just a tunnel, almost like a road, just moved all the rock out of the way, 
I'll show you a picture at the end of what it looked like. 14 years listening to the haters. 14 years with no help. How is he motivated? What in the world got into this guy that he would try something so crazy? Because there was something that he wanted. Please write this little phrase down. Somewhere, somehow, <coughs> on your phone, I don't care where. You prove what you want by what you do. You prove what you want by what you do. Have you ever heard someone talk about something, but then you go, that doesn't add up? I don't think they really want that. Because they say, yo, I'm a, I'm a be, I'm a be swole. <laughs> and you're like, you're eating nachos. <laughs> you don't exercise. You're not you, no. <laughs> Talk is cheap. Action proves everything. Ramchandra could have sat in the, in the little village every night going, yo, that mountain's toast. Oh, I'm going to get it. And then every day doesn't do anything. Just talks, runs his mouth. Here's my question. What do you want? What do you want? What do you want? Now, you can say, like, I want a jacket because it's cold. Okay, I'm not talking about little stuff. What do you want? Because there are things that we want that are bigger than that. Maybe it's this. I want my relationship with my mother to be better because it's really gone sour. Or my relationship with my sister. I was just listening to a podcast where there was this woman talking, saying she hasn't talked to her sister in 10 years, and she can still remember the last conversation they had. You think she wants that to be better? I'm sure. Maybe you want a promotion. Maybe you want to be more respected. Maybe you want to, to feel like you belong even more in your family, in your friend group, in your neighborhood, at work. You want to feel like you belong. I want this. I want to earn more money. I want to buy a house. Okay. Prove it. Don't keep telling us, and don't keep telling yourself, and don't keep telling your BFF, hey, I'm going to I'm gonna buy a house. Oh, oh when? Um, soon. Oh, okay. Please stop running your mouth about stuff. I'm talking to myself in the mirror right now. This is me too. What if we just went out and proved it? Or stopped talking about it? So if there is anything right now that you can imagine, Anything meaningful, significant, that you wish would be better tomorrow than it is today, let me see a hand. There's anything you're thinking of. Be in better physical shape. Uh, have a better relationship with a coworker where that really gotten dramatic and it's really gotten ridiculous and you're like, oh my gosh, I want that to be better. I want more opportunities at work. I want, I want. So you're saying there's something. Okay, how do you, how do you get that? And not just talk about it and actually be about it and do something. I think it's reverse engineering. You know what reverse engineering is? You take the final product like a clicker and you say, okay, what does the clicker do? The clicker is not malfunctioning. Well, it was before. It's not malfunctioning now. But a clicker or a phone or a Bose speaker, you look at the final product and then you say, okay, let's reverse engineer it. How did they get to that point where you have this very, very helpful thing that does something important? Reverse engineering, here I think it comes down to two things. To have, to go after the things you want and to actually live a life where it feels meaningful, it feels like it counts. But it comes down to this. Instead of going, someone should do something. Because our Achilles heel is that we have this tendency to say, somebody else should do something to make my life better. Well, my sister, yeah, my, my relationship with my sister is terrible, but she, she better apologize. Because that remember that Christmas gift she gave me three years ago? That was ratchet. And I don't, I don't even think she wants to apologize. So it's on her. Okay. <laughs> this is what we do. We think it's everybody else's responsibility to, to help us to get what we want. 
What if we just realized it's very, very exhausting to try to control other people? It's very tiring to wait for other people to move. You know what you can control 100% of? You. you. <laughs> the things you say, the things you do, the way you react, you can control all of them. Let's keep going. Here's your tools. The hammer and the chisel. Voices and choices. We're going to reverse engineer because all it takes is two tools. To actually go after the things you want, to live a life that feels meaningful, that counts for something. Here we go. Two tools, voices and choices. You ready? You ready? Yes. You ready? Hi. Ready? <laughs> Who likes going to movies as much as me? Nobody. Okay. <laughs> Who likes going to movies? Yeah. Like at the theater. Yeah. You like going to the movie. Yeah. I don't want to watch it on my phone. I'm going to watch it on the big screen with the big noise and the big everything. And you got your 64 gallon bucket of popcorn. And you're like, nah, nah, nah. it's healthy. It's a vegetable. <laughs> that's not butter. Okay, that's something else. <laughs> it's chemicals. Okay, listen. But you got a Diet Coke. You're like, I'm watching my figure. <laughs> but listen, do you like getting there early and watching the movie trailers? Oh, I love it. I'm there 30 minutes. I'm like an absolute dork. I'm like, here, okay, they're not even started yet, but I'm early. What if you could watch a movie trailer? A day in the life, the movie is, a day in the life of you, 10 years in the future, and you're just going to watch a two-minute movie trailer. Who would want to see that? Some brave people. <laughs> now, hands up if you're like, let me preview it before anyone else sees it, just so I can be like, oh my gosh, I have three kids. <laughs> oh my gosh, my kid has three kids. All right. <laughs> you would want to preview it first? Raise your hand if you're like, don't show me that ever. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> now listen, I can actually show you that movie. In a world. <laughs> We're nothing is as it seems. It's a day in the life of Bill. There's Bill, you know? He's got three kids. Okay. I can actually make that happen, and it's not magic. It's science. And you can't outsmart it. And it works positively and negatively. Voices. Here's what it comes down to. You take the five people, the five people that are the most influential up here for you. It doesn't have to be even the people you spend the most time with. Because you can spend time with somebody, but your father's voice is still way more influential than theirs. Than theirs. Got it? Like the five most influential voices, it could be your grandmother that you grew up with. It could be your next door neighbor. It could be your friend, your spouse, your kid, your, your coach, your boss. I don't know who it is. The five most influential voices in your head. Here's what's cool. You tell me who they are. <clears throat> I will take those five people, I will sit them down at that table over there, they'll, they'll all come to Atlanta, we'll sit down right over there, and I'll start asking them questions. I'll say, okay, what do you do on Saturday morning? Next Saturday morning. Uh, tell me about your relationships with family members, with coworkers, with your neighbors. Tell me about your ambitions. What are you like going for? What are you hoping for? Tell me about how much you exercise. Tell me about your mental health these days. Tell me about the trips you go on, the adventures you go on. Tell me about all these things. I will interview them only for about 10 minutes. I'll send them out of the room. I'll bring you in and sit you down and tell you exactly who you will be. You will be in 10 years, and I will be in 10 years, because science says you will become the average of those five people. Mm. Why can't I get in better shape? I just don't understand. I hang out with people that play Dungeons and Dragons, and only eat cereal for every meal, and I don't. I'm not throwing shade at Dungeons and Dragons. I'm the same. It could be just the same as all I do is just like all I do is sit around with people who just smoke weed a lot, and then they they don't do much. They don't have ambition. How come I can't get in better shape? Listen, it's not rocket science. You will become the average of the five people you spend the most time with. If you want to get in better shape, you've got to hang out with people that are in better shape. Oh. You hang out with people that exercise. Because on a Saturday morning, when they hit you up and it's 6.30 a.m. and you're like, I don't know why you're calling me. Just text me. And you're like, no, I'm calling you so you would wake up because we're going for a jog. And you're like, oh, what? I don't go for a jog. I go for a donut. All right? So I don't. What? You hang out with people. 
who are in better shape than you, you will. <coughs> See this? This is how it works. Watch this. Quality voices, they kind of look like this. Who are my five? Look at this. Quality voices. <coughs> you can zoom in and take a picture of that. I don't care. Look at this. Dependable. They support your goals. They support your goals. Just as much as they support their own goals, they support your goals. They're ambitious. Here's one way to actually make yourself a more quality voice. What if you actually started asking better questions? And you say, instead of, hey, what's up? If you say, tell me one thing that, that was so funny that happened in the, like, the last week. Um, oh, okay, well, my dog uh, wore a hat. You're like, oh my god! I'll see you at lunch. <laughs> that is better. That's better than, yo, what's up? Like, boring questions. What if we did this? Last one, and then we're moving to choices. Look at this. What if you said, if you have like group chat or something, like where you can send messages to each other, what if you send a message to Rando in FEXA and you said, what can I do tomorrow? I'm carving out 30 minutes to do something for you. What can I do for you? Because I'm clearing my schedule from 10 to 10.30. Or, or if there's a better time, you tell me because I want to do something for you. What would you feel like if you got a chat like that? Would you be like, idiot, I don't want your help. Would you think that? I doubt it. Or would you feel encouraged? Would you feel like, oh my gosh, that sounds like a quality voice right there on the other side of this crew chat. You know what I mean? So go be this. Just be this. Let's move on. Choices. Look at that. That's how you can be. Seneca the Younger, he lived right around the time of Jesus Christ, right when B.C. became A.D., and then uh, Seneca the Younger was a Stoic philosopher, and he said this, you are your choices. The chisel, the hammer, voices and choices. Seneca the Younger, he was on to something. You are your choices, because the choices you made yesterday got you here. The choices you made two years ago got you here. You are a result of a bunch of choices. That's kind of interesting to think about it that way. You're the result of a bunch of choices. Now, before you start getting all up in my face and saying, yeah, but I'm a result also of choices other people made, and I didn't make those choices, and I, you know, you did choose how to respond to those choices that someone else made. You're making a lot of choices. So if you want tomorrow, you, you all raise your hand. You said, there's something I want to be better tomorrow than it was today. Well, guess what? Here's what it takes. At least one choice you're going to make today has to be different than the choice you would have made yesterday. Or tomorrow will look identical. And maybe you're cool with that. Maybe you're cool with that. You want tomorrow to look identical? Make the identical choices you've been making. But if you want tomorrow to look better, something has to give. Make sense? Here we go. How many choices does the average person make in a day? 35,000. I know. Yes. Because one foot in front of the other is still a choice. Look at this. Every time. The vast majority of these are subconscious. You're not thinking about this. Okay. Come on, foot. Come on, foot. You got it. Okay. Okay. Got it. Got it. All right. Next one. All right. I mean, you're not thinking about that unless you're doing recovery or something. But the vast majority are unconscious or subconscious. Our choices are driven 70% by emotion, 30% by logic and reason and rational thought. You know what the most common emotion, so here's the emotions in the middle, this is the emotion wheel, you can look this up yourself. The most common emotion that drives our choices, what do you think it is? Out of all these, love, angry, numb, sad, happy, surprise, fear, which is the most common? <coughs> Fear. fear. Absolutely. Fear is the most common emotion that drives our choices. Isn't that a shame? And you know what the most common feeling? Because here's what happens. We've got stimuli that come into our brain. It goes into our emotional center in our limbic system. That's who gets it first. And it goes, all right, what are we doing with this? What are we doing with this? And then they release hormones into your bloodstream that make you feel things positive or negative things that make you feel surprised, that make you feel sad, that make you feel whatever it might be. See what I mean? Like this is how it happens. And then it goes to your prefrontal cortex where you have rational thought. But your emotions, they're like, no, we got it first. 
Whatever this stimuli is, releases hormones and that becomes feelings. Look at this, fear, right here, anxiety. Anybody got some anxiety they deal with besides me? You got some anxiety you deal with? You know what's crazy? <laughs> anxiety is driven by the emotion of fear. 92% of things that we feel anxious about are things that will never happen. They will never happen. 8% of the things on average that someone feels anxious about will come to fruition. 8%, so 92% of the time, it is a waste of our time to worry about. But we worry because we feel fear. How do you deal with fear? Well, let me tell you. Number one way is you stare it in the face. But that's scary. I didn't say it wasn't. But you stare fear in the face. Especially if someone asks you to give a presentation. You're like, I feel anxious because I'm going to be embarrassed. I'm not going to know my stuff. Someone's going to roast me because I, I was talking weird. Or they're going to be staring at my, my, the way my hair is. And I, I feel all this anxiety. I'm not going to do a presentation. 99% of people would hate doing what I'm doing right now. But here's how you handle fear. Is you go, What's up, fear? I'm looking right at you. What happens is fear starts to back away. It goes, whoa, whoa, what are you doing? What are you doing? This is not how we usually operate. Usually I'm in charge. And you go, no, 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 I'm in charge today. I know it sounds like, Mike, are you serious? I'm serious. This is not me. This is data that says when you actually face and address the fear and chase it and look at it and walk toward it and not cower from it, it actually diminishes. Isn't that cool? It actually works. I'm not just saying weird hippie stuff up here. Three tips for wiser choices. You want to make better choices? You want to make wiser choices? Three tips. Look at this. Earlier the better. You make choices between the time you get up and the time you're having lunch. You will make slower and more rational, good, wise choices. Did you know that? Did you know that already? Some of you probably did. After lunch, all the way until the time you go to bed, the, the later it gets, the less rational your choices become. You can decide things quicker, like, give me that ice cream cone, all right? So that's me. I'm not thinking about it. I'm not going, well, I probably shouldn't. You know, like, I'm, I, I'm not thinking. I'm eating a box of Cheez-Its, not a handful, a box, unfortunately. <laughs> Your rational thought is just out the, out the window at that point. You're like, ah, oh, who cares? Make important choices earlier in the day. That's one helpful tip for you. The next one, remove yourself, remove yourself, and play it forward. Okay, if I choose this, what's the worst that could happen for Bill? Not for me, but for Bill. Okay, okay, okay. What's the worst that could happen, and what's the best that could happen? Play the movie forward with someone else in your spot. Does it make sense? It actually, these are not, I didn't invent these. These are things that work. These are things that psychotherapists have come up with. The last one, get quiet and breathe. Fear releases cortisol. Cortisol leads, leads to anxiety. Anxiety, when you feel it, cortisol takes 36 hours to get out of your bloodstream. So you're like, why do I keep feeling anxiety? Because that thing happened yesterday. I know, because there's still cortisol in your <coughs> bloodstream. Did you know that you can reduce, it's almost like a half-life. That cortisol leaves your bloodstream when you get quiet and you just breathe and you take a little walk and you're like, you just chill out right now. Because I'm about to say something to Sally because Sally just mm, got on my last nerve. And I'm about to say, mm, let me take a little walk. All you do is just walk down the hall and walk back, and while you're walking, all you're doing is focusing on the most primitive, important thing you can do, which is just breathe. It works. It lowers your cortisol level. Isn't this cool? It's actually science. You can't outsmart this. It's cool. Let's keep going. Look, there's Ram Chandra. Look at my boy. He did not get that at Home Depot. <laughs> He's got some primitive tools right here. Ram Chandra Das, he was in his 40s when he started. 14 years later, he finished. There's the 
tunnel that he drilled by hand. Let me tell you about something about Ram Chandra, and then I'm done. Interviewers, people, journalists, they came up to Ram Chandra when he finished, and they said, what in the world motivated you to do this? Why would you do this? You're crazy. He goes, there was one that came before me that inspired me. They go, huh? There was a guy who lived one town or one village over years before him that Ramchandra had met. His name was Dashrath Manji. Dashrath's wife <coughs> had fallen ill. He could not get her to the hospital in time because they're going through jungle, over hills, over rocks. He could not get there in time, and she died. And he swore to himself that he was going to do something about this so that this wouldn't happen to someone else. Dashrath spent 22 years on his project, and it was twice as long as Ramchandra's. You thought Ramchandra sounded crazy at first, right? But what about Dashrath? Now you're like, whoa, 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 that's a whole nother, what, 22 years? I mean, fast forward 22 years. That's wild. Here's the thing. We are contagious when we have ambition or when we don't. When we play the victim all the time, it's contagious for the people around us. When we don't have ambition, it's contagious. When we do have ambition, because if you want it, go get it. You do something about it. You call your mother tonight and don't ask for anything and say, Mom, I just want to hear how your day is going. <gasps> because you and your mom these days are like, Argh! but you say, Mom, how you, how you doing? <laughs> you know what I mean? You make the first move. You pick up a hammer and a chisel. You say, well, I'm going to do something about it. Because wouldn't you want a better relationship? Less drama? I want less drama. Believe me. You will be contagious. Be the kind of person, watch this, the last thing I'm going to say, and then I'm done and handing it over to Kurt. The last thing I'll say, when people see you coming, they will say one of two things. They will say, oh, great. Bill's here. Yes, Bill's here. Love Bill. Yo, Bill's here. No, Bill. 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 Yeah, yeah. Or they'll say, oh, great, Bill's here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here goes the neighborhood. Because you know how Bill is. Who do you want to be in that story? Which one? Which version of Bill? <laughs> but listen, I want to be that first version. I want to be that kind of person. And we, I showed you how to be a quality voice. I want people to love working here, and it's all your fault. How about that? Because there are people that will quit, and it's all your fault. And you say, no, no, no. People work here longer because of me. People love it here because of me. It's my fault. Quality voices. Wiser choices. You can drill through mountains, you know what you're doing.